Let's show. Alaska. I heart beat Alaska. It's hot. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. Hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for genius show. It's the alley. everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Information. I'm your hostess Jeannie Green. We travel every week to a remote village somewhere in Alaska and share the experience with you. And this week we traveled to the community of Seward, Alaska, paradise in the summertime and I was there to celebrate the 4th of July. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by Kupik Carlisle Transportation, your full service transportation and logistics company. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. A special thank you to Scan Home and Scan Office Furnishings. And thank you, Alaska Commercial Company, for your support. Don't go away. Fourth of July in Seward, Alaska, coming up. Hey everyone, is your home or office furniture showing its age? Let Scan Home and Office update your image. Albert's the expert. Give him a call, toll free. <laughs> he can create the perfect furniture layout in the space you have available. He can even do this over the web. Scan Home wants to become your rural home office furniture supplier. It's mine. They even have financing options. Stop in at the corner of 36th and Arctic. The trails are on my way heading to uh, 0 2 and 20, so the 20 line and the 0 2 and the way around. Okay, and left side traffic and everything. Uh, you want to try to touch down at the beginning portion of the runway. Who looks at traffic says that it's on 6 November is on base for the runway. Are you ready to party? Let's do it. July 2006. My dream 4th of July. The reason? It was in Seward, Alaska, and I was part of the parade. I went to junior high and high school in Seward, Alaska, and a great deal of my family lived there. Many friends and relatives. It was very, very special. Today we'll take a look at the parade and much more. We'll show you how many people showed up to build the award-winning Heartbeat Alaska float. And building a float, I found out, was no small thing and neither was a float. It took many, many hours of pounding and hitting those two by fours just to build the infrastructure on this 45 foot flatbed supplied by Carlisle Transportation. That's my husband, Dennis Green there, and my brother, Kenny Blatchford. Every tool we had was used in making this float, but it was okay. We were right on the shores of beautiful Resurrection Bay.
TV producers trying to build a float was like, well, TV producers trying to build a float, but if at first you don't succeed, keep trying and trying and trying. When the sledgehammers failed, we tried what we had available and luckily Carlisle Transportation came through. Darren Cummins came rolling down. Here he is, the white knight on his horse. He's going to lift those boards right into place. Talk about power. Well, you gotta use what you've got, right? Darren and his family came through not only with the forklift, but his entire family were running around helping in every way, shape, and form. Now, this is really interesting. Using what's available, we're used to that here at Heartbeat Alaska. But a forklift, well, if you don't have the manpower, you do what you gotta do. And, of course, applause is necessary. So we took a 45 foot flatbed and covered it with 100 feet of chicken wire. This chicken wire was the idea of my sister Ruthie Stanley and I'm not sure whether I should thank her or not. Wow, what a job. This, I understand, was doing it the old fashioned way. People said, why don't you just throw tarps up and do it easily, but no, we wanted to make it really special. After all, we did have a huge tractor trailer, a 45 foot flatbed, lots of space to decorate. It took so much time, but while we were in the sun in Seward, I had time to reflect on the people here. The Katuchik tribe, made up of 400 different native people living in the Seward area. And what's unique about this tribe is that they're all from different nations. Mom, that's why it's so stupid so many people didn't know. The Curtis family here, what they're doing is placing some of the 200,000 napkins in the form of flowers into each little hole in the chicken wire. Well, not each one. We were able to skip every other hole, so it wasn't quite as bad as you would think. However, this took, we approximate, probably 60 hours alone just putting flowers in. I hope the effect was worth it. Our theme was One Nation under God and that we wrote in blue napkins on the side of it. There's Barbara Curtis and when she wasn't busy putting napkins in, Barbara was busy making food for us, a delicious okay, potato you. salad. No. <laughs> I think it's time for me to go. <laughs> Where did everybody go? <laughs> it's on the camera. Oh. And where did Jeannie go? We're making a napkin run right now. Someone said, Jeannie, you're going to use a lot of napkins. And boy, did we. We estimate that we used over 50 packs of napkins and we had to go from one store to the other. I was surprised at how the youth were able to help. It's not so hard though, when you're right on Resurrection Bay and time out means sitting on the beach in one of the most beautiful settings in the entire world. Everyone had a job. Seth here was the napkin man. Along with the beautiful scenery, the mountains, and the wonderful water comes wind. And if you know Seward, Alaska, you better be prepared. Well, we were prepared for any likely showers. We weren't really prepared for the wind. Now, if we were a sailboat, we'd be in great shape. Well, it looks like we better all rally together before this thing takes off. It was quite a handful. The first thing was to get the tarp up over the napkins. In the event of a rainfall, we had to hustle and get this tarp over the napkins. We can't let all those hours of artistry go by the wayside and watch our beautiful float disappear under the rain. But getting the tarp on was another matter altogether. 
the wind was gusty and wanted to take off and a few times we thought we were going to take off with the whole float up in the air sailing across Resurrection Bay. Luckily, it did not rain at all for the three days we were building the float. Three days of putting flowers in chicken wire and hammering two by fours, holding down tarp, holding down tarp and holding down tarp, all getting ready for the big day. I knew the parade would have a great crowd because they were there awaiting the annual Mount Marathon race, world famous race. All right, good. We got a few more minutes here for the red. That attracts runners from all over the globe. This historic race started with a bet. A bet many, many years ago in the early 1900s and has grown to this spectacular race today. Five, four, three, two, one. Hundreds and hundreds of participants. Well, there's a challenge ahead. It's a steep, steep climb all the way up and back down again and not without many, many injuries. But that's what people are here for. They want to participate. They want to run with their binoculars, go up the mountain with those runners and experience what they do. Even little kids can't wait for the heroes to descend that mountain. And they're all heroes, every single one who manages to make it up and down. He's number nine. Even the very last few, most decorated, I must say, are welcomed and cheered on for their efforts. And of course, the women, the top women that run this mountain every year. I always stand back and say, thank you, go girl, go. Better you than me, and I am so proud of you. <laughs> Such magnificent athletes, every one of them. Once upon a time, there was a wise man who built his house in the Northland where it's cold, where the wind blows, but he had a toy over.
The Toyo Stove Laser 60 AT with the wood fireplace design is the perfect direct vent heating system for your home. A force flue pipe design for venting results in maximum efficiency and a large circulation fan distributes clean heat quickly and evenly throughout your house. Papa, you're the wise man. You have a Toyo Stove. Arriga. Mokai, the versatile, durable, environmentally friendly and fuel efficient watercraft that's fun and easy to own. The strong polyethylene hull withstands scratches and impacts from river rocks. The jet pump requires only four inches, allowing for shallow water access, and the three gallon tank provides eight to ten hours of use. The engine and jet pump can be removed without tools in under a minute, making transport, storage an easy task. Mokai, accept no boundaries. What was in the end? kitchen when you took your order? You guys want a pizza? Yeah! Okay. This dough is made fresh every day. This is something that I enjoy. Uh, just dealing with people and getting to know them and seeing them leave here happy. This is a real spicy uh, Philly right there. It's called a Mexican Philly. Here's your pizza. <laughs> What's in it? Bring your sausage. Fast free delivery. Pizza, subs, and fillies. Back to the parade. We were sitting and getting ready on 2nd Avenue, ready to begin the mile and a half trek. William Jackson made sure that his group of 20 odd dancers were all ready and prepared. I come from the Clinket people. I'm a Raven Coho. My dad comes from the Raven Sockeye clan. And I was very fortunately to have uh, some people from this land, from the Denana Athabascan people from Nam Dalton, that were joining, joined me during the uh, parade. Uh, so a lot of times we, we might join together and uh, make one good uh, dance group. And because uh, we both have, we're both starting out our dance groups here in Anchorage. So a lot of times we ask for help and they ask for help from us. So we trade off here and there and, and sometimes they might join us, sometimes we might join them and make one, one good group. Introduce yourself. My name is Zachary King Khan. My mother's Marty is Raven. My father's Marty is both. I come from Anchorage, Alaska. Thank you very much. Probably the most important thing is that um, Everybody that's teaching, uh, keep on teaching the younger generation about the uh, Native culture because uh, we're losing every generation that passes away, we lose a, a lot. And, and I've, uh, I've been very fortunate to be taught by a lot of different uh, elders in my area. And I try to teach uh, what, I've, what I've learned, but there's uh, some people are kind of hesitant in uh, teaching uh, the Native culture. Uh, for one reason or another, so uh, I encourage people to uh, go out there and teach whatever you you know, because there's bits and pieces what people other people know that would uh, make a whole piece. And uh, I think that's probably the most important thing in 
teach your children uh, who you are and where you come from. There's too many people going to come in front of us, Nanny. I want you to do a place. You got to look at the dog. 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 Started off uh, uphill, and <laughs> that's probably the probably the most uh, I think we had the hardest time is going up going uphill because we were on foot and had two hills in a row. And before the audience started to uh, see the audience a little bit, so I know a lot of our dancers uh, got pretty tired first first couple blocks. <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> re-energized us and we started uh, I guess uh, drawing their, their energy because they were clapping and cheering so it made us look a little bit harder and so by the end of the parade uh, I was pretty beat. <laughs> I 
got a very, very good response uh, what well, the whole group did and uh, they really like us because uh, a lot of times uh, the native uh, groups ain't uh, been uh, represented in a lot of different functions, uh, well, non, non-traditional functions and so when we started going through the crowds and they're cheering and hooting and hollering and they're happy to see us and so we put on a real good show and uh, it's just uh, something that we like doing is uh, showing who we are and we try to put the best show as we possibly can out there. <laughs> Sharing the native culture from all the way up north, Point Hope, Alaska, was a joy this year. And Heartbeat Alaska brought Point Hope dancers just for this parade. They did their best, and their best excited the crowd as they sang traditional Inupiat songs. The Frankston family, what a fabulous group of people willing to share, as is their tradition for thousands of years. My dream came true, participating in the 4th of July parade in Seward. And we brought Heartbeat Alaska to Seward. We brought hope and joy and fun and shared our culture with everyone. And they shared their joy and applause with us. I don't know who had more fun, but we'd like to thank you, Seward Alaska, for your generosity, for your fabulous opportunity you gave us to share our native culture with you. I think we all came away with something special. I know I did. Thank you everyone in Seward, Alaska. Thank you so much, Chamber of Commerce, for the best musical entry 4th of July parade. Seward, Alaska, July 4, 2006. My dream come true and I've got many more dreams that I'm going to pursue and maybe they'll take place in your community. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Jeannie Green. Join me again next week for more Alaskan programming. God bless every single one of you. I'll see you then. Uh, 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 uh,